Okay, so how do you test the mark feature in a font, and how do you test the mark to mark feature in a font, and how do you make sure that they're in there in the first place? Um, this is a bit of a tricky topic, um, just uh, and just in that it's like a little bit below the surface of what you tend to think about as a type designer, um, or what most type designers uh, designing Latin would maybe tend to think about. There are a few techniques that are really helpful, and I'm making this video in part so that I can point people to it if they ask about this, but also because like I couldn't think of this off the cuff, and I will probably need to reference this video myself later um, to remind myself how to do these things. So um, the main thing about mark features and mark to mark features is that if you generate a font with font make, it'll do most of this automatically for you. If you have placed anchors in your glyphs and accents in a good way. Um, there are other ways to do this. You can like write it out in the FEA syntax um, in your UFO and generate through other means like RoboFont Batch. Um, you do have to write some um, CCMP code, I think, in the feature file syntax to generate to like differentiate case accents potentially. Some of that's a little bit more advanced that I'll get into in this video. What I'm going to cover is like, how do you test these things if they're working at all? Um, and how would you then add a mark feature for a glyph if it's not yet there? So, all right, simple testing is um, a little harder than testing your pre-composed accents. So to test your pre-composed accents, for instance, if you type like option E, you'll get this is font goggles, by the way, great tool to check out a font and um, inspect that it's working and that like characters are assigned to the right glyphs. Um, let's see, so if I want to type in E acute, I type option E and then E on a Mac at least. If I want to type U acute, option E and then U, and that gets me my pre-composed figures. But if I want to type um, a figure that's not there, like, uh, well, it's actually hard to know. Okay, so that's a good example. Uh, R acute is not a precomposed uh, glyph in my font. So how do I get that? Well, all right. So one thing you can do is like, if you have a glyph that you know you want, um, for instance, maybe somebody's transliterating indic, um, they might have this R macron dot below. Um, if your mark feature is set up correctly, you should be able to paste this just like that, then it should work. Um, likewise, there might be a lowercase version of this. I don't know. But it works because there's a mark feature. The R glyph has a top anchor and a bottom anchor, and then these combining accents are in the font with underscore top anchor and underscore bottom anchor. But what if we wanted to actually like type this out? Well, you can type the capital R and then use control command space on your Mac to bring up your glyph palette. And normally I just use this to like insert emoji into a text message or whatever. But if you click the top right uh, button, it'll give you a slightly bigger view and then you can search for characters. So like if I search Macron, um, I can click around. And the tricky thing is that there are like multiple versions of the Macron character. So you have to find the one that is combining Macron. So I type that. OK, that gets me my combining Macron. And then let's find the combining dot accent. Oh, dot below, I guess we really need. Combining dot below. So gonna, there you go. So you double click it when you found it and it assigns it. So we could also make our uh, lowercase version of this in a similar manner. Yeah. And uh, I guess it doesn't actually matter, you know, if we do the dot or the Macron first, at least it, it doesn't appear to matter. But all right, so what if, um, oh, and let's try that R acute thing as well. 
just to get it. Um, oh, that, okay, that letter's not in my font. Um, where's our combining acute? There we go. And again, the Arglyph has the correct anchor, so it's able to work because this font was generated with a font make, so it sets up this mark feature automatically. Um, what if I want to test it on a glyph that doesn't actually have anchors? So the X glyph in the source font doesn't yet have anchors, so if I try this, it just doesn't work. So let's quickly look at how we can make it work. Um, here's the source file. Uh, let me remove the guidelines. They're a bit complicated. Um, so I'm going to add a top anchor. And I, I think that that should be enough. But for whatever reason, I was previously testing it. And it seemed to work a lot better. Like, it didn't seem that a top anchor was necessarily enough on its own for font make to categorize that. Um, as a base glyph, and maybe that's a font make issue or something. But in any case, adding both the top and bottom accent or anchor worked. So let's save this. And I just generated this font um, using font make a moment ago, just straight from the UFO. Um, and yeah, you can see that the X is not working with the mark feature. Let's uh, find my terminal. Okay, uh, let me hit clear. All right, so I'm going to point font make to this UFO, um, um, there it is. This uh, <clears throat> pasteboard is a Mac app called Paste, and I really love it. Um, yeah, it's really handy. And I want to output a U OTF. So it builds, and this skips like my main build chain for OTFs here. So like you'll notice that this OTF doesn't have any like stylistic sets and things that are actually in the name sans OTFs. All right, so it saved this and I've actually set up font or font goggles to be, oh, okay, the file is already there. <laughs> uh, so I didn't have the glory of typing it out, but let's, oops. Um, yeah, let's just do it for fun. So X and then combining acute. Cool. So that just shows that um, it works. And let's even do the dot below thing. Combining dot below. Awesome. So if some transliteration or something language needs this, it's now there. Um, the one level up as well is that like if I want to stack accents, acute, let's find that combining acute. So far, it's not working. It's just going into the exact same place. But if I go to the acute combining and I give this one a top accent or top anchor, sorry, top, cool, it's there, I want it to be at zero and then the cap height for this one. I'll save that and let me rebuild my font and see if it changes. I think it will. Do, do, do. Okay, there you go. You see that it just kind of continually stacked on itself. Um, but yeah. So you can see that the mark to mark feature is working and uh, font goggles allows us to kind of toggle these features on or off. So if I turn it off, it's no longer working. And yeah, everything's disrupted without this mark feature on. So that's a good uh, way to see if it's working. Yep. So unfortunately, it's a little slower than typing it out, like in the way you would type out, you know, E acute or um, other characters. Uh, you know, but it's pretty fast. So hopefully that helps. One final tip um, that I would say is that there is a really cool library by Simon Cousins called Font Features. And if you pip install this, um, you can inspect the font features in a font. So um, there, I think this library does quite a bit, but this um, OTF to FEA 
uh, tool is the thing that's my favorite so far. So I'll say OTF to FEA, and I can point it to this OTF. And then if I just run that, it'll output on the command line, which is a lot to scroll through. So I can also say, um, I'll give it this like greater than symbol. And then I'll say like um, FEA dot TXT. And then I'll open that. Um, will it open? Apparently not. Why don't I open it in my code editor? Uh, VS Code. All right, that's a lot more clear. Um, yeah. So this then shows me the full like FEA syntax of the features in the font, which is super handy because um, it's not always clear before you run your build, like say the current feature, what will that look like? Um, and then it also, if we like um, command F to search for base X, it'll tell us that the base X is indeed in our, uh, in a lookup here, uh, mark to base lookup. And then like that lookup is used in the mark feature uh, to position things. So yeah, it's still a little hard to like parse this, like to understand what is happening in this feature syntax, but it's really some of the time extremely helpful to have some way to, to do that. Um, you can also look at like different font tables using a tool called TTX, um, which is also useful, but just kind of like not in the same way. Um, I'm lost. Where is everything? <laughs> yeah, so uh, hopefully if you Google this or if I Google this in the future, this video comes up and points to some useful techniques. Uh, best of luck on whatever you're making lately.